Good evening, and thank you for joining us for our Maundy Thursday service tonight. My name's Tim Johnson. I'm the senior minister here at St. John's Diamond Creek, and I'll be joined tonight as we bring this service by one of our associate ministers, Ros Rudd. Tonight, we begin the great three days of our Lord's passion, death, and resurrection. The journey from the supper table to the cross, from the cross to the Easter dawn. We are followers in his way, exploring his truth, encountering his life. This is the night when Christ, the Lamb of God, gave himself into the hands of those who would betray him. This is the night when Christ gathered with his disciples in the upper room. This is the night when Christ gave us the remembrance meal. As we break the bread and drink the cup, we feed on him in our hearts by faith with thanksgiving. This is the night when Christ took a towel and washed the disciples' feet, showing us how to honour and serve one another in love. This is the night for watching and prayer. We give ourselves freely to the demands of these great days, confident that those who die in Christ will surely live with him. So let us pray together. Merciful God, on this, the night he was betrayed, your son Jesus Christ washed his disciples' feet. As we commit ourselves to following his example of love and service, teach us humility. God of grace, hear our prayer. On this night, Jesus prayed for his disciples to be one. As we grieve for the divisions in the church, unite us. God of grace, hear our prayer. On this night, Jesus prayed for those who would come to believe through the disciples' message. As we take up the mission of the church, renew our zeal. God of grace, hear our prayer. On this night, Jesus commanded his friends to love but he suffered rejection himself. As we open our hearts to the rejected and the unloved, fill us with your love. God of grace, hear our prayer. On this night, Jesus reminded his people that if the world hated them, it had hated him first. As we face our own fears, we pray for those who are persecuted for their faith. Give us your peace. God of grace, hear our prayer. On this night, Jesus loved his friends to the very end. As we open our hearts to all who face darkness tonight, we pray for the sick, those who mourn, those trapped by violence, addiction or pain, give healing and hope. God of grace, hear our prayer. Faithful God, these are the prayers of your church. We offer them, trusting and hoping in you. Hear and help us, challenge and change us, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Tonight we are using a tenebrae service. Tenebrae, meaning darkness or shadows, has been practised by the church since medieval times. Tenebrae is a prolonged meditation on Christ's suffering. The readings trace the story of Christ's passion. Music portrays his pathos and the power of silence and darkness suggests the drama of that momentous day. 
One of the most conspicuous features of the service is the extinguishing of candles until only a single candle, considered a symbol of our Lord, the Christ candle, remains. As it gets darker, we can reflect on the great emotional and physical pain that was so very real for Jesus on that evening. Toward the end of the service, the Christ candle is extinguished, typifying the apparent victory of the forces of evil over good and symbolising the deep, painful darkness of that night. The Shadow of Betrayal When evening came, Jesus was reclining at the table with the twelve. And while they were eating, he said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me. They were very sad and began to say to him, one after the other, Surely you don't mean me, Lord. Jesus replied, The one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. The Son of Man will go just as it is written about him, but woe to that man who betrays the Son of Man. It would be better for him if he had not been born. Then Judas, the one who would betray him, said, Surely you don't mean me, Rabbi. Jesus answered, You have said so. Jesus Christ, his 
The Shadow of the Agony of Spirit and Arrest Then Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to them, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee along with him, and he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. Going a little farther, he fell with his face to the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. Then he returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. Couldn't you men keep watch with me for one hour? He asked Peter. Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. He went away a second time and prayed. My father, If it is not possible for this cup to be taken away unless I drink it, may your will be done. When he came back, he found them sleeping, again, because their eyes were heavy. So he left them and went away once more and prayed the third time, saying the same thing. Then he returned to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Look, the hour has come, and the Son of Man is delivered into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us go. Here comes my betrayer. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. With him was a large crowd, armed with swords and clubs, sent from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had arranged a signal with them. The one I kiss is the man. Arrest him. Going at once to Jesus, Judas said, Greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. Jesus replied, Do what you came for, friend. Then the men stepped forward, seized Jesus, and arrested him.
the shadow of denial. Now Peter was sitting out in the courtyard and a servant girl came to him. You also were with Jesus of Galilee, she said, but he denied it before them all. I don't know what you're talking about, he said. Then he went out to the gateway where another servant girl saw him and said to the people there, this fellow was with Jesus of Nazareth. He denied it again with an oath. I don't know what you mean. After a little while, those standing there went up to Peter and said, Surely you are one of them. Your accent gives you away. Then he began to call down curses and he swore to them, I don't know the man. Immediately, a rooster crowed. Then Peter remembered the word Jesus had spoken. Before the rooster crows, you will disown me three times. And he went outside and wept bitterly. Judas, Peter, a poem by Lucy Shaw. Because we are all betrayers, taking silver and eating body and blood and asking, guilty, is it I? And hearing him say, yes. It would be simple for us all to rush out and hang ourselves. But if we find grace to cry and wait after the voice of mourning has crowed in our ears, clearly enough to break our hearts, he will be there to ask us each again, do you love me? The Shadow of Accusation Meanwhile, Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? You have said so, Jesus replied. When he was accused by the chief priests and the elders, he gave, gave no answer. Then Pilate asked him, don't you hear the testimony they are bringing against you? But Jesus made no reply, not even to a single charge, to the great amazement of the governor. But the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowd to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus executed. Which of the two do you want me to release to you? asked the governor. Barabbas, they answered. What shall I do then with Jesus who is called the Messiah? Pilate asked. They all answered, crucify him. Why? What crime has he committed? asked Pilate. But they shouted all the louder, crucify him. When Pilate saw that he was getting nowhere, but that instead an uproar was starting, he took water and washed his hands in front of the crowd. I am innocent of this man's blood, he said. It is your responsibility. All the people answered, his blood is on us and on our children. Then he released Barabbas to them, but he had Jesus flogged and handed him over to be crucified. Then the governor's soldiers took Jesus into the praetorium and gathered the whole company of soldiers around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him, 
and then twisted together a crown of thorns and set it on his head. They put a staff in his right hand. Then they knelt in front of him and mocked him. Hail, King of the Jews, they said. sorrows, Lamb of God, by His own betrayed, the sin of man and wrath of God has been on Jesus laid. Silent as He stood accused, Beaten, mocked, and scorned Bowing to the Father's will He took a crown of thorns On that rugged cross My salvation Where your love poured out over me my soul cries out, Alleluia, praise and honor unto thee. Sent of heaven God's own Son to purchase and redeem and reconcile the very Rugged cross, my salvation, where your love poured out over me. Now my soul cries out, Alleluia, praise and honor unto thee. Now my debt is paid, it is paid in full. By the precious blood that my Jesus spilt, now the curse of sin has no hold on me. Whom the sun sets free, oh, is free indeed. Now my debt is paid, it is paid in full. By the precious blood that my Jesus spilt, now the Hold on me when the sun sets free, always oh, free indeed. Oh, that rugged cross, my salvation, where your love poured out over me. Now my soul cries out. the shadow of crucifixion and humiliation. After they had mocked him, they took off the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. As they were going out, they met a man from Cyrene named Simon and they forced him to carry the cross. They came to a place called Golgotha which means the place of the skull. There they offered Jesus wine to drink, mixed with gall, but after tasting it, he refused to drink it. When they had crucified him, they divided up his clothes by casting lots, and sitting down, they kept watch over him there. 
Above his head they place the written charge against him. This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Two rebels were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by hurled insults at him, shaking their heads and saying, You who are going to destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. Come down from the cross if you are the Son of God. In the same way, the chief priests, the teachers of the law and the elders mocked him. He saved others, they said, but he can't save himself. He's the king of Israel. Let him come down now from the cross and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God rescue him now if he wants him. For he said, I am the son of God. Before the throne of God above, I have a strong, a perfect plea, a great high priest whose name is love, whoever lives and pleads for me. My name is graven on his hands, my name is written, his heart. I know that while in heaven he stands, no tongue can bid me thence depart. No tongue can bid me thence depart. When Satan tempts me to despair and tells me of the guilt within, Upward I look and see him there Who made an end of all my sin Because a sinless Saviour died My sinful soul is counted free For God the just is satisfied To look on him and pardon me to look on him and pardon me. Behold him there, the risen lamb, my perfect spotless righteousness, the great unchangeable I am, the King of glory and of grace. While in himself I cannot die, my soul is purchased by his blood. My life is hid with Christ on high, with Christ my Saviour and my God. With Christ my Saviour and my God. The Shadow of Death. From noon until three in the afternoon, darkness came over all the land. About three in the afternoon, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of those standing there heard this, they said, He's calling Elijah. Immediately, one of them ran and got a sponge. He filled it with wine vinegar, put it on a staff, and offered it to Jesus to drink. The rest said, Now leave him alone. Let's see if Elijah comes to save him. And when Jesus had cried out again in a loud voice, he gave up his spirit. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook, the rocks split, 
and the tombs broke open. The bodies of many holy people who had died were raised to life. They came out of the tombs after Jesus' resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared to many people. When the centurion and those with him who were guarding Jesus saw the earthquake and all that had happened, they were terrified and exclaimed, Surely he was the Son of God. When I survey the wondrous cross on which the Prince of Glory died, my richest gain I count but loss and poor. The Shadow of Burial. As evening approached, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who had himself become a disciple of Jesus. Going to Pilate, he asked for Jesus' body, and Pilate ordered that it be given to him. Joseph took the body, wrapped it in a clean linen cloth, and placed it in his own new tomb, that he had cut out of the rock. He rolled a big stone in front of the entrance to the tomb and went away. It is finished.